most romantic branch of any Civil War army was the cavalry. Even today, 150 years later, the exploits of John Buford, Nathan Bedford Forrest, Jeb Stuart, and George Custer still appeal to the imagination. Civil War cavalry had three primary functions, reconnaissance, screening, and guarding. Overall, these three areas of responsibility boiled up into one main objective, that the cavalry was used to collect and disseminate intelligence through the high command. At the beginning of the war, there was a great disparity between the Union and Confederate cavalry, especially in the Eastern Theater. The Union Army of the Potomac parceled out its individual cavalry regiments to the various commands, leaving them at a disadvantage to the Confederates. The well-organized Confederate cavalry led by Jeb Stuart often rode rings around the Army of the Potomac. This began to change, however, in 1863 due to improvements in three major areas, organization, logistics, and technology. When Joseph Hooker took command of the Army of the Potomac in early 1863, he organized his cavalry into one corps under one officer. This reorganization bore fruits on the battlefield, especially at the Battle of Brandy Station, fought on June 9, 1863. The largest cavalry battle of the war made the Union cavalry, wrote Henry McClellan, a member of Jeb Stuart's staff. In the spring of 1863, the federal government created the Cavalry Bureau, based in Washington, D.C. It was the responsibility of the Bureau to inspect and purchase new mounts for the Union Cavalry and distribute arms and equipment to the various Union regiments. This type of office did not exist within the Confederate government, leaving the Confederates at a major disadvantage. Still, the Confederates remained formidable opponents under the leadership of individuals such as Wade Hampton and Nathan Bedford Forrest. Technology also drove change on the battlefield. The emergence of repeating weapons such as the Spencer rifle and Spencer carbine added a new dimension to the cavalry's combat role. Now on the battlefield, the horse could be used as a means of transportation from various points and the Union cavalry could engage in dismounted combat against the enemy. One such example occurred in June 1864 at the Battle of Trevilian Station, the war's largest all-cavalry battle. However, the traditional role of the cavalry did not change in combat. Third Winchester witnessed the largest cavalry charge of the war, and Mine Creek in Kansas witnessed the second largest cavalry charge. Changes in technology continued to drive the evolution of cavalry into the 19th and 20th centuries, into the armored cavalry and the air cavalry that we know today. <laughs>